It was our locked vault, the oldest nuclear waste store at Sellafield and amongst the oldest in the world. Built with filling and storing rather than emptying in mind, there was no way out for the nuclear waste inside the pile fuel cladding silo. But now we finally fully opened it up, ready for emptying. The last job to get at the waste inside was to cut the sixth and final hole in the side of the building and remove the last section of wall. The team had had plenty of practice, having already cut five identical sized holes and closing the doors over them so the radioactive material and inert argon gas inside could be safely contained. They won't be opened again until we've installed all the equipment which takes the waste out, which we expect to be in 2019. Six holes in the wall, six reasons to be confident we're well on the way to reducing hazard and risk at Sellafield. Well, it's a fantastic, um, uh, satisfying achievement that uh, for, for so long we've been working towards this. We set plans uh, to deliver this aspect of, of the programme and we've delivered uh, this uh, project three months ahead of schedule uh, and under budget. Other big jobs to get the silo ready included removing the old deflector plates which used to spread the waste evenly as it was tipped in. These would have been right in the way of our waste retrievals equipment, so all six had to be removed remotely from outside, like keyhole surgery on an industrial scale. Safely cutting them up using abrasive water jets to avoid any sparks took 16 months. On a sensitive building like this, every job is carefully planned and practiced beforehand. Commissioned in, in the 50s, it's an old uh, deteriorating building, uh, needs a lot of maintenance, but as you can imagine, working uh, in such a constrained area, working at height, and with the radiological risk that, uh, that is posed by the building, um, you have all those factors that need to come into the planning and execution of, of the safe construction uh, work that's been going on to date. And that really is a testament to the integrated and collaborative way we've been working with our supply chain partners and our stakeholders that have been on, a, on this journey with us. Now the silo itself is ready, the next steps will be to finish building and then install all the waste retrievals and waste handling equipment which will be used to reach into the silo, pick up the waste and place it into steel boxes for safer storage at a specially built facility. But now is time to recognise the work done to get us to this point. Work like manufacturing and then lifting up the massive door installation frame which was used to get the doors into the right position. Placing the first highly engineered door onto the side of the silo was also a huge step forward. And gave us the confidence that we could install all six by the end of 2016. Installing the huge rig needed to cut the holes was another engineering feat, as was safely cutting the first hole so that daylight entered the silo for the first time in decades. We could even wind the clock back more than 10 years and point to the work safely removing the transfer tunnel at the top of the silo. Getting this pensioner of the atomic age ready for waste retrieval operations has been an enormous feat. This programme has been going for, for, for many years, a lot of planning, um, you know, hundreds of people involved, uh, whether it's uh, down in Darsbury, our offices there with the, the, the design uh, and the project management, here on site, our supply chain in the in wider uh, areas uh, around the UK, uh, and also a lot of manufacturing being supplied from, from our scythe in Scotland. So really quite a, a national endeavour to get us to this stage.